Yeah, tricky subject I want to talk to you about yeah. today. Um, it's a bit like when I do the climate ones. I've uh, had the discussion with Alex Epstein and then Andrew Desla. I've got both sides, and I think I'm going to have a similar thing with this topic. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to Rizzo when we're in New York. Yeah. But uh, I want to talk to you about Bitcoin maximalism because uh, I think of myself as a Bitcoiner. Yeah. Sometimes I've called myself a maximalist, but then sometimes I haven't because I've realized maybe I don't follow... Uh, some of the same principles as some of the maximists, but like one of the things I was conscious about, me and Danny were talking before the show, is uh, I want to be a positive force for Bitcoin. I don't mm. want to do bad things for Bitcoin. And there has been this heightened discussion recently. We're in a bear market, so it naturally happens, but yeah. there have been some heightened discussions around what maximalism is, what it isn't. And I felt like you would be a good person to talk to. Yeah. I know you like to trigger people sometimes, <laughs> but. Uh, I always find it interesting to talk to the people who push against ideas, challenge ideas. I think that's where some of the most interesting discussion is. So how are you feeling about this? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I'm. People definitely considered me a Bitcoin maximalist for you know for a while, for for years probably. And um, I think I never liked the term. I always, you know, I always said that I don't like it and don't identify as one. But obviously, for for obvious reasons, I think people saw me as a Bitcoin maximalist, which which I understand. Um, it's hard to define it, right? Like I think the the most like courteous um, definition I would give would be like, well, it's someone who only wants to focus on Bitcoin. And that's, I think that's super reasonable for anyone to, to decide that they only want to focus on Bitcoin and not on other things. Um, <laughs> you know, just in general, humans who choose to focus on a specific thing, they often do very well, right? So it makes sense to specialize. And if the thing you care about is Bitcoin, that's great. But that's not really what, you know, when, usually when someone calls themselves a Bitcoin maximalist, I don't think that's really what they mean. Like, they don't mean I only focus on, on Bitcoin. And you can see that with um, um, just the way that people speak about other things, right? Like, um, I think a lot of so-called Bitcoin maximalists spend a lot of time talking about things that are in Bitcoin, right? Like about how Ethereum is bad and how other tokens are bad and so on. And and those, I think those are the people that that um, one identify as Bitcoin maximalists and two other people seem to identify them as Bitcoin maximalists. So like coming up with the exact definition of what it means. I know it's really difficult. I think it's difficult for for a lot of things. And we we you know we had this very short back and back and forth on Twitter where you asked like what Bitcoin maximalism is, and I I said to me I think it's almost a distraction to try to define it because people know we're like when when we say Bitcoin maximalist, I think people know who we refer to, and 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 those people call themselves Bitcoin maximalists. So I don't think we need to guess. And it's it's it seems very similar to a religion. Well, I, I think on that there is. There's two separate things. I think uh, it's easy to identify who is a Bitcoin maximalist, mm -hmm. but to actually fully understand what Bitcoin what maximalism is. is, I yeah. think it's a it's a bit harder. And yeah. uh, I I don't do many interviews mainly because I'm shit at being a guest. But when I do, <laughs> and it's I, I tend to do it on non Bitcoin shows, and I did one in the FT, and I I think I referred to myself as a Bitcoin maximalist because mm. it felt in that scenario it was a useful term. Mm. And then I could say, well, it's it's the only cryptocurrency I'm interested in. It's the only one I work on. It's the only mm. one I own. It's the only one I really talk about. That's that's how I used it. But recently I've felt like a bit of a hypocrite and I shouldn't be using that term because I've had discussions. Well, I've always said, actually, ever since I started the show, I see a use case of Monero. I see scenarios mm. where I want to use that and I've been criticized for it, but like I've stood by it because, because I do. And even more so recently, I've been trying to, I wrote a tweet about trying to square the circle of not like in shit coins, but also following what Gladstein says about the usefulness of digital dollars in certain parts right. of the world. And like, I can't square that circle. Like, how do I criticize Tron and Ethereum as shit coins while at the same time knowing, you know, in Palestine, access to tethers is, is super useful? So, yeah. so I've stopped to, to using the term to self describe, yeah. but, at, but at the same time, I don't want to fight Bitcoin maximalists at cross purposes. I don't want to have that argument. I don't want to have that disagreement because I think we agree. Most Bitcoin maximists, I think I agree on 95% of things, 95% yeah. of things. And then we're arguing over this 5%. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it feels destructive. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's accurate. I think, you know, um, most Bitcoiners I know 
you know, I've been around for a little while and I know um, Bitcoiners from a few generations, right? And most of the ones I know from, you know, let's say the 2017 era or before, um, while a lot of them are, again, only interested in Bitcoin, first, at least in the cryptocurrency sphere, you know, like there are a lot of people who hold Bitcoin do <laughs> completely other things in life. They bought some Bitcoin a long time ago, put it aside. They're usually doing the best of all of us. You know, they put some Bitcoin aside and they just mind their own business, do other things. And they're not, they don't focus their lives on Bitcoin. But in the cryptocurrency world, they only care about that Bitcoin. And, and, and I think that's very reasonable. Um, but we, I don't know. I think we, we, maybe because we tried to, I don't know if it relates to the whole block size war thing in 2017. I don't know if it's something else, but um, we changed the focus. Like the focus is not really on Bitcoin anymore. It's on all the things that Bitcoin isn't, it feels like. I, f- I think the constructive way to How look, do you mean? What do you mean by that? Well, Bitcoin isn't um, um, great with privacy. Bitcoin isn't great with um, retaining its value over the short term. Right, because of volatility, Bitcoin isn't great with uh, building decentralized applications. I think that all of those things are fine. Um, Bitcoin wasn't, you know, didn't necessarily set out to fix those things, and and it, Bitcoin is doing great in what it is. Um, but we seem to be really focused on what it's not, you know, and and I think that's why it's so destructive, you know, because I mean I don't know I don't see people who are Tesla fans um, going around and saying that um, Apple is a terrible company because it's not making cars. Like, you know, it's just, it's not, the, the companies don't compete. Why <laughs> why make it into a competition? Well, I, I can empathize with why people do because mm. it's very easy to lose a lot of money. Very, even with Bitcoin, but it's very easy to lose a lot of money. And yeah, uh, there are, there are certainly, I'm not in the everything that isn't Bitcoin is a scam because I think it's important to uh, separate outright scams like OneCoin, which is designed mm-hmm. to rob people of their money, yeah. from ideas which are stupid mm-hmm. to ideas which maybe are different from your worldview. I think you've, yeah. got, you've got to separate them to uh, separate them all, so you don't just give the because I think I think putting an outright scammer in with somebody who's just got a stupid idea, I think that is fraught with danger. Um, but what I was thinking about with this show is like I always want to make shows that are useful, and uh, I don't want to piss people off for no reason or two at all. And I thought what would be useful today with you is as somebody. One of the funny thing is I probably disagree with you a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And I put out a lot of tweets where you like instantly challenged me, but at the same time I don't fall out with you. We don't we don't block each other. We've yeah. not said we can't be friends. We we will have a beer. You know we'll fly in and yeah. meet up. And, and I think that's healthy, and I want a lot more of that. And I, that's why I wanted to approach this with you first and say, like, what is, like, I want to get to the bottom of what maximalism is. I put out the tweet. I said, because mm-hmm. everyone was arguing, I was like, well, can anyone clearly define what Bitcoin, maximum, Bitcoin maximalism is? And it got a range of uh, replies from personal kind of definitions to being mocked, uh, to being subtweeted. There was a range of things. But I, I actually meant that. I was like, I, I don't actually know what it is. Yeah, I, I know what it is to me, but I don't really know what it is. And if I don't know what it is, and if I was to criticize Bitcoin maximalists, are we actually arguing across purposes? Because I'm I'm criticizing on one point, they're defending on a different point, they're not even aligned. And I think that's potentially an issue. Yeah, 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 I think you're right. I think, you know, um, th- there's definitely a lot of talking past each other all the time, for sure. Um, <laughs> There, there are two. So I think there are two ways to de- try to define it, right? There's. Can we do one thing before that? Sure. Because the question I have for you, and I'll answer it for me, is like, what what is Bitcoin to you? Mm. And in your kind of like long term trajectory worldview, what would be a success for you? For Bitcoin. For Bitcoin. Yeah. Well, Bitcoin. I think that Bitcoin is a neutral form of money. I think that's the thing it's best at. Um, it's predictable and it's neutral. There's no one who can change it, um, and that has, you know, that has value. Um, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not sure if it's the most important thing in the world, <laughs> you know, but it has value. I think it's still today undervalued by most people. Like, you know, you could buy some Bitcoin today, put it aside, 
save it for your grandchildren and you know that they'll they'll get the same Bitcoin that you put aside today. It wouldn't be inflated. It wouldn't be confiscated. That's not a lot of other assets that you can do that with. And it's digital, you know? So I think that's in itself, that's very unique. That's great. It also, being neutral and being censorship resistant, it also allows for... Um, a lot of use cases that I don't think are necessarily a great fit for Bitcoin, but they can start with Bitcoin. So, so for example, um, you know, we had uh, dark markets very early on. They don't necessarily use Bitcoin as much these days as, as they used to. And I, and, and I don't think that's a bad thing. You know, maybe they moved over onto Monero. Maybe they have some other payment schemes they're using. They proved there's a use case. There's, they proved there's a group that's interested in those things. They proved you can build a market there. And then they started looking for, for things that are better fit maybe than Bitcoin. Um, and I think that's fine. And I think you'll see that kind of, um, you know, same thing with uh, usage of Bitcoin in, in, in countries where you can't hold dollars, for example, where people would want to hold dollars, but they're not allowed to. So... I think earlier on, people, yeah, used to use Bitcoin for that. A very small minority of people, but still some people used Bitcoin for that. But then as stable coins um, became more and more popular and people trusted them more and more, a lot of people are saying, look, I just want access to dollars. <laughs> you know, I'm not here for the ideology of Bitcoin. I just, I just want access to dollars. So as long as the stable coins exist, I'm going to use them. Maybe if, you know, if Tether stops working or if Circle stops working or whatever, then maybe I'll need to reconsider Bitcoin. But for now... You know, that's that's the best solution for my problem. So I think um, I think Bitcoin allows for a lot of that kind of experimentation that eventually settles down somewhere else. And that's an amazing thing. That's great. That's a win, you know? Like, yeah. Now people have the freedom to try things out that they couldn't before. And, um, and you know, eventually arrive at a solution that, that, that works better than what they have. That's, that's, everyone should be happy about that. That's good. Um, I just don't know that Bitcoin is going to be the long-term solution at every point in time for every person. And I, I feel a bit similar. Uh, I agree with you. It's great to have uh, this form of money we've never had before. Any of us can, you could get out your phone, I can send you some Bitcoin now and you hold that. I think that's great. I think it's pretty cool that when, when I went to El Salvador, I, last time I didn't use a cash machine, I just used mm -hmm. Bitcoin because I was only a Zonte, mm -hmm. uh, which was just interesting. Yeah. Just a very interesting thing. And uh, there was a time where I couldn't get, I couldn't pay a cameraman in Japan years ago when I went out and did the, Mark Carpellis interview. We, we couldn't get the banks to connect. Mm. I sent him Bitcoin. There's lots of things like that that are super cool. And it's an amazing thing. And like you say, you can hold it forever. I can leave it for my kids. That's really cool. I think my long-term goals are more towards maybe some of the more Austrians in that I think uh, if Bitcoin was widespread enough and it it brought a little more, little bit more economic responsibility to the state, I think that would be super cool. I, I, I love yeah. that idea. I'm not. So, I'm not one of these people who believes in the complete collapse in the state. Not because I'm a statist cuck, but actually because I think the the state is a natural monopoly. So if you get rid of the state, a new one arrives, and it might be worse than what you have. And I, I'm just not there yet. And I'm also not fully clear on the consequences of a Bitcoinized world. I don't know if there are negative uh, consequences that we haven't fully considered. It's like it's an area I'm still exploring. Yeah. But um, but that's kind of where where I am with it, and so it's it's really important to me. I mean, I've dedicated my life's work to it now. I'm, I'm not going to work on anything else. Yeah. So it is really important to me. But at the same time, I'm I'm super conscious of not doing, as I said at, at the start, I don't want to do things that are bad yeah. for Bitcoin. I would hate to drive a narrative or do something on the show that led people to think something that was wrong. Yeah. And hence why uh, why we're here. Yeah. Um. So I interrupted you earlier. I made you answer that question before. Yeah. Um, I think we, um, there, there are two, I guess, two ways to try to define what maximalism is. And, and they're, they're very at odds um, with each other. And one, one way would be, you know, I like the way that Pete Rizzo puts it. Um, that's really maybe kind of a cultural phenomenon that is trying to answer a question of how do we make sure that um, you know consumers are protected and how do we make sure that people build on Bitcoin even though um, it might not be financially 
uh, the best decision for them. Um, and, and, and Bitcoin maximism is sort of this cultural ideology that tries to answer those questions. And I think that's one way to put it. Um, the, you know, the main, it, it, it might be the reason why maximalism exists. Um, I would just argue that it's not doing a very good job at it. You know, like if, if the goal of Bitcoin maximalism is to prevent scams and protect consumers, well, did it do very well at that? You know, like in the last two years or so, we've had a lot of scams, a lot more than before. So in the last two years, did Bitcoin maximalism do a good job at stopping scams? I would argue it didn't. And it's not, it's not about, you know, it's not really about intent, you know, like it's possible that people have the best intentions at heart. And, you know, when I say this, people very often get defensive and they're like, well, it's not our fault that there are scams. We tried to stop it. It's not our fault. And yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not blaming Bitcoin Maxwell for the existence of scams. But I think that if we, um, if we claim that our goal, that the thing we're doing is to protect consumers, then we have to ask ourselves, are we doing well? <laughs> you know, if we're failing at that, then maybe something's not, you know, maybe something's not working. Maybe we should change things up if that's the goal.